Oh. Hello again. Don't mind me. I'm just currently making a case for my client's existence. As you can see, kind of an expert on that. However, my clients... Not, not so much. Prepare for trouble and make it... Awkward. Ever since the inception of video games, multiplayer has always been a staple part of its identity. Just take a look at these two playing Pong, Your Honor. That is, in fact, multiplayer. Objection! You're the judge. You can take turns, play together as a duplicate, or maybe even play together as two different characters. There's a lot to say about multiplayer and its implementation in the games, but today I'd like to talk about when it... Kind of is. I selected two player mode, where's my friend? 1.5 player, or as I'd like to sometimes call it, the buddy player, is a type of multiplayer where the first player has access to everything they normally would, and the second would not. They may have a presence in the world, they may be able to interact with a couple of the game's mechanics, but they play as more of an assistant to the first player than they do an active second force. Instead of letting the second player help you finish that ice cream, they just had them become the spoon instead. Thanks. There's a variety of reasons a game would take this round instead of full-blown multiplayer. Perhaps the mechanics were not designed with two-player interaction in mind, or maybe the game wanted to focus on a single-player experience, or they just didn't have enough time for actual multiplayer, so they haphazardly slapped this in to give the parent buying their kid this game something to do. Few games seem to actually do this, though, but one of the earliest examples of this I can think of is Sonic 2 for the Sega Genesis. Objection! Relevance! Showcases the implementation of the buddy player, your honor. Again, you're the judge. There was a versus mode where two players could race in a stage, but there was also full-on multiplayer in the main campaign. Oh, sorry. Follow the leader in the main campaign. If you had a second controller plugged in and pressed any input while playing as Sonic and Tails, you might notice that Tails really is sentient. He could do anything Sonic could do, defeat enemies, collect rings, and even more interesting, keep the ability to die and come back without affecting the life counter. The main catch? Eternal Damnation. Whoever plays as Tails is only really going to be playing when Sonic is alive and standing still or a boss fight is happening and that camera stops moving. If you've ever played any of the classic games or Mania where this little feature exists, you'd know that both situations only happen so much. Whoever plays as Tails may as well just wait until a boss or special stage appears unless the one playing Sonic knows how to run for the ball and chain. Do you really think the one playing Sonic would subject themselves to this? Shadow the Hedgehog actually supports this too, allowing a second player to control a side character following Shadow at the time which also meant any of the limitations present in the classic games are present here as well. In other words, that's okay. While we're on the topic of Sonic, why not take a look at Sonic Colors, since it has a mode that is literally titled 1.5 Players. See, I'm not crazy. This is concrete evidence of existence. I'm going to need some more convincing before I allow. Multiplayer wasn't present in the main campaign, sure, but it was present in the side mode, Sonic Simulator, which was basically a bunch of Sonic levels set in this blocky, gamey style, designed in a way that accounts for two players. They get their own boost and wisp gauge, separate life counters, the whole nine yards, everything you need to feed two mouths. How do you feed half a mouth? One boost and whips gauge, one life counter for player one, and the second player becomes a zit. They'll be in this ball form following player one around and will be able to turn into a playable Sonic with a button press. You'll both be sharing a boost, wisps, and rings, but if the second player ever dies, don't worry, he'll be back. More options are better, I'd say, since there is an actual two player option, there's gonna be there than not. If you ask me, it exists. Objection! Speculation until I rule! Are you an unbiased judge? Even better. I am biased. That's a handful of Sonic games willingly implementing multiplayer, both full on and half breed. So let's talk about Mario for a second. Now that I can allow. Going from planet to planet is a blast, but what if I could do that with a friend? Well, lucky us, because it looks like we can. Not. You don't get Luigi or anything of the sort, no, the green man is reserved for much later in the game, but you know how the first player gets this blue cursor that allows him to pick up and shoot star bits? Well, the second player gets an orange one, because nothing screams second player than being a gnat on the screen. They do have a few exclusive moves, such as holding enemies in place, forcing Mario to jump or spin, and if both players press the jump button at the same time, Mario will do a super jump. I can't see any two individuals making active use of this second cursor other than the dad or mom who bought this game for their four-year-old kid. But I think that's the point. The way I see it, the buddy player is not equal to a second player, they are meant to be more of an assistant. Someone that can't finish the game in place of the main player, but can give them a bit of a boost when they get stuck. Through that lens, I think it actually works well as a co-op mode. Though the fact that an unsuspecting individual could totally think something more interesting after seeing the number 2 on the box here, 
was a bit funny. While I'm at it, when Galaxy 2 came around, this little cursor became a small orange Luma. They were capable of collecting coins, and, uh... And that's it. Hmm. You're not gonna believe this. They just made Spoon 2. It gave me this whole new ability with it. I, I can drink with it now. Super Mario Odyssey. Player 1 has access to everything Mario usually does, but the second player has full control over Cappy, the hat. It may not be doing what Mario does exactly, but it does gain access to a moveset that's a bit similar. They can jump, ground pound, capture objects farther than usual. It's great. This is an engaging way to let a parent help their child without actively making them a force that can carry the adventure. The one playing Cappy isn't carrying Mario, he's helping him. And whoever isn't playing Mario, the one that'll likely be the four-year-old in the scenario, will get to experience the game just as well with their parents than alone. Would have been cooler to have Mario and Luigi running around in one world. <sighs> yeah. But I do think that if they're going to keep the game single player but have at least some form of co-op, uh, at least the buddy player has more to do than usual. You know, Luigi's Mansion actually takes the same route. Uh, let's take a look. Okay, give me an hour. I love this game to death. That's more than just the ghost talking, and the scare scraper does create up to four player co op. But isn't it a bit odd how you kind of have to unlock 1.5 player? You kind of had to do that in Super Mario Odyssey as well, but in that game, it was after a couple seconds. Here, you've got to start a new file, go through the tutorial, find Egad, save Egad, murder the dead bellboy, get the virtual boo, murder the dead maid, and only then can our dad can play. I mean, I get it. Luigi himself is an extension of Luigi's toolkit. He may be a bit smelly, but what do you expect from the color green? I get that he has to be unlocked in a way that feels right for the first player. It just takes a while to unlock him for the second. But that's merely one hurdle to get through. Aside from Luigi's water weakness and lower health, he's practically a second Luigi during normal gameplay. And because of that, this is the closest I've seen a game become two player without actually being two player. If only it smelled better. Another game I remember doing this was actually Gears 5. An interesting shift in the conversation, but I believe you can handle it for a second. All the previous Gears of War games allowed for two players to control their own soldier, but Gears 5 allowed for a third character to control Jack, this robot dude. I see it as the character's Cappy in this game, being an extension of the moveset until they gain sentience from somebody on the couch. I haven't played the game, and as a result, I've never experienced what it's like to actually play this one, but from what I can tell, it must have been at least a little bit jarring to hear it has co-op and notice your friend turned into a robot. How does that happen? But since it also allows for the standard two-player co-op in previous games, Jack is also a Sonic Color situation, something that can be appreciated for its existence as an option. Let's shift the conversation back to Nintendo by talking about how Animal Crossing New Horizons takes a slightly different approach to 1.5 player. Well, I can't argue with that. So, with the multiple switches and copies of the game, you can have up to eight people on an island at the same time doing whatever they like. All is good. I have no problem with that. If you want to play on one switch, well, you can. One of the players will have the role of leader, where they'll be able to do anything they're able to during normal play. Everyone else that isn't leader? can cut trees. Anything they collect on the island just gets thrown into the community chest for the player to grab later. At least they have the freedom to do various tasks on the island and use any tools they had in their inventory before joining the party. But everyone just has to stop if the leader dares to look in their inventory. Would someone have to die to have a split screen in Animal Crossing? Everyone would get their own screen, their own inventory, pretty much everything they need to wander around the island and do as they want. Maybe it was too demanding on the Switch, maybe the game couldn't handle it, but Man, I just think this kind of game isn't much to get excited over when it comes to couch co-op. I'm sure some of it is me not being all that interested in Animal Crossing to begin with, but still doesn't make me question its existence. At least I can appreciate it being present, but then I have to ask, if you're going to do this much, why not a little more? That's kind of the thing whenever I see a game put in this kind of co-op for the buddy player in general but don't have anything for full-on multiplayer. Sure, Animal Crossing does have that full-on multiplayer, when you take out a loan. But look at Kirby in the Forgotten Land. That game is amazing in nearly every way. But who would willingly choose to play as Waddle Dee? I love the little guy, and I'm glad it's possible to take a friend along, but wouldn't it be far more interesting to play as another Kirby? I mean, previous entries have allowed for the second player to have a presence as either a differently colored Kirby or a different character that possesses similar abilities, so why not do that here? I don't know if modifying Mothful Mode for two players would have been simple or not, but I'm sure it would have made the second player experience more fun. Half of the Kirby experience is to literally suck enemies up, take their power, and interact with the environment to unlock secrets. Take that away and you're just the guy with a knife for violent tendencies. Objection! Are you okay there? I, I may need a recess. 
I think that's why it's a very underserved feature in video games. Heck, I don't even think it's ever really been a talking point considering whenever I try to search up games with it, it would just show people being confused about Sonic Colors having it as an option instead of the actual concept itself. Oh cool, of all the people to remember me! It was you. Each game I've talked about so far are the only ones I really know of, so... I had to know if there was more. As it turns out, Sonic 2 isn't the oldest showing of 1.5 player. My worries have been dashed away. Nah, the concept of 1.5 player actually made one of its earliest appearances on the Commodore 64 in a game called Whizball. The main player controls his wizard. A wizard? He turns himself into a ball to save the world from losing its color. An anti-colorblind wizard. He has this cat that also turns into a ball, which he can move around at the cost of his own movement. But only the cat is capable of actually collecting these paint droplets, so the player has to be cautious of knowing when to actually let the feline do its job. I dare you to see a dog try to do this. However, if a second player joins in, they'll be capable of moving the cat themselves, and you know what? That's pretty smart. It's pretty simple, but this was the 80s, so that's pretty smart. The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, specifically the original release. If you connected the Game Boy Advance to the GameCube via a link cable, a second person could control the Tingle Tuner. They can buy items and special perks that'll help Link, such as restoring Link's health and magic, allowing him to float in the air, and self-sabotage. I've only seen a couple of RPGs try 1.5 player. You could have a second player use a second controller to control a second character during a battle in Final Fantasy 4, 5, 6, and 9. May as well just pass the controller at that point. However, Child of Light actually has this little light that, when playing alone, can be used to interact with the world, stall enemies in combat, or heal yourself. But when you have a second player in on the action, they control the light instead, giving us another copy situation. How about that one time Pokemon did a bit of co op in the Let's Go games? After getting a Pokemon and ensuring two controllers are connected, if the second player shakes their controller, they'll be able to play as a second trainer. Yes, two playable trainers for the first time in the Pokemon series and the second trainer can only really help bully others. Uh, not again! Well, this is just a worse Animal Crossing situation. They can't interact with NPCs, pick up items, they can't even encounter Pokemon. They just walk through them instead. And you know the weirdest part? While the game practically allows you to take on every trainer 2v1, but when you actually encounter two trainers at once and have to battle two Pokemon at the same time, the game rips away your friend. Why? You allow them to sit around and help you bully trainers, but when it comes to the teamed up baddies and trigger a moment that makes sense to have two people playing, you force them to watch as player one does the fight on their own? It's games that execute 1.5 player in this way that make me go, well I'm sure the parent will gladly help their child, but who else would use this? While games like Luigi's Mansion do it in a way that make me go, oh, well parents and children can roll with this, and I can actually see myself play this with a friend as well. And this just makes me sad! And yet, both still make me think, why not just add a second player? I know it's odd to criticize a game for what's not in it as opposed to what is, but whenever I see a game claiming to have co-op and it's more of a 1.5 player situation, I can't help but ask, why not go all the way? There's a variety of reasons a game would take this round instead of full-blown multiplayer. Perhaps the mechanics were not designed with two-player interaction in mind, maybe the game wanted to focus on the single-player experience, or they just didn't have enough time for actual multiplayer, so they haphazardly slapped this in to give the parent buying their kid this game something- I've said this before. It's nice that a second player has something to do other than just watch their friend play the game. But what's stopping them from playing something with actual multiplayer? Doesn't the thought of two Marios running around in split screen seem so much fun? Just take a look at a Hat and Times multiplayer where Hat Kid and Bow Kid can act on their own, go out in the world, explore whatever they want. Assuming you bought the PC version. Heck, you don't even really need a second character. There are plenty of games out there that, for the sake of allowing second player to join, just duplicate the main character. It may not make much sense or there'd be two buzzes, but who cares? We can shoot each other. This kind of multiplayer would be so much fun in Super Mario Odyssey, and yet, it's only possible to experience something like that through mods. That doesn't make me think any less of the game, but you had the resources to do this, but not this. Thankfully, most games that are capable of implementing 1.5 player usually just finish the job and create an actual second player which makes sense. Why create a multiplayer experience that will only work best for a parent and child and then not one for everyone else? In the end, I'm sure most parents will just sandbag to let the child play, so maybe the need to distinguish 1.5 co-op from any other type of multiplayer just doesn't exist yet. That was the worst possible way I could have ended that statement. All right, after reviewing all of the evidence, I believe I'm able to hand down a verdict. Wait, Your Honor, the prosecution isn't even here yet. 
Objection! Disagreement! He's right there in your hand! What? The prosecution rests. Very well. This court finds the topic. 1.5 players. Court is now adjourned. Come on, that's so unrealistic. Judges don't wear hats.